Welcome to the Mental Advantage Podcast. Whether you're an athlete trying to perform at your best when it counts the most, a coach or business leader trying to get more out of your team, or someone looking for more personal growth, this is the place for you. This podcast is your map to guide you to the right mindset, systems, and strategies you need to become the best version of yourself. Now, here are your hosts, John Cullen and Brandon Allen. All right, welcome to the Mental Advantage podcast. Uh, Brandon, how are things going with you? Very good. Very good. Excited about tonight's guest. It should uh, it should be interesting. Yeah, no, it's a... Uh, Guys, the guest tonight, Michelle Lee, um, is going to talk a lot about neuro-based training. She's going to talk about, you're going to hear you know, her talk about bioenergy healing and RPR, which is reflexive performance reset. I mean, just a fascinating conversation because, you know, as Brandon and I um, were saying, you know, one of the, the cool things about this show is that you're going to hear, this is a... I would say a next evolution of physical therapy yes. and that, yeah. you know, there is of course, all of these uh, clients that she has have already are coming back from injury. Some of them maybe don't have an injury that is bad enough that it would require surgical intervention, but yet it's painful for them. And it's, you know, and, and she's got some different um, systems and strategies that she utilizes to, um, you know, help them deal with that pain. It's almost pain management, I think, yeah. probably a, a form of pain management, but um, really interesting stuff. And Michelle, you know, is somebody who was an athlete. Um, she uh, is a personal trainer and a coach. I mean, she's a former collegiate athlete, so she knows what it's like. And one of the things she, you'll hear her say is she actually managed to make it all through college without an injury. Uh, which was actually intentional. Like it was one of Correct. those things she was very purposeful about. She, she manifested that and in, yeah. in her thought and behavior patterns. And that's what I love about um, what they'll hear tonight. I mean, this is to your point, it is the next evolution and it, it hasn't been fully adopted yet. And I right. think um, the one thing I think that you'll definitely be able to take away is that um even though it maybe hasn't been fully adopted, Michelle has a passion for it. Um, she's enthusiastic about it. I mean, she was great, uh, great personality, shared a lot. Um, it, it, it will give our listeners something that, you know, they could potentially do um, at home. So, and, and you'll hear different times throughout the episode where um, whether it was you or me, you can almost see the dots being connected. Like we are like, she says stuff that makes us think of something from the world of mental performance that has overlap um, as it relates to, you know, positive thinking, for example, versus negative thinking. There's different times, you know, where we talk about releasing the thought. So there's, there's a lot of, uh, of blending uh, for those of you who've been with us from day one, uh, or even really just from halfway through the episodes um, that you will hear some of the things that other uh, experts that we've had on the show have talked about and thought leaders kind of, you know, it really blends in with what she's doing. And so I think it's a really fascinating thing. I know. And what I want you to do is think about as you're listening to this show um, is different times, whether you're an athlete, whether you're, a uh, business leader, whatever the case may be, it's somewhere along the line, you have probably had an experience where somebody has shown you a place on your body that you can push a certain muscle and it has had a positive impact on another area of your body, whether that's releasing, um, you know, your hip flexors through a different route uh, than just stretching. Yeah. And I think that is what you know that's an easy way to think about that is that connectivity because when you start hearing about reflexive performance reset and some of the um you know bioengineering healing and all of that stuff and lymphatics that's that's what we're talking about there yeah absolutely it it should be a good one though it, i think uh, i think they'll be able to get a lot out of it well without further ado get that pen and paper ready because here is Michelle Lee 
All right, Michelle, welcome to the show. We uh, can't thank you enough for joining us tonight and um, really looking forward to this conversation, uh, getting into all of the cool things you're doing, in particular with the neuro-based uh, training that you do. Um, but first of all, welcome. Thanks again for for coming on with us. Thank you. Thanks for having me. I'm excited to share a lot of different things. Well, you know, the uh, listeners heard during the introduction there that you've got a lot of different hats in the air or wear a lot of different hats, I should say. I mean, it's the, you know, athlete, the personal trainer, the coach. I mean, a lot of cool things there. But before we get going too far down that road of, you know, all into all the science and the neuro-based training, I wanted to start with just you. Like, where did this come from? What got you interested in subjects like lymphatics and bioenergy healing? Where did that evolution start? So I, 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 I was a pro, so starting college and high school. I ran track. I was all American in cross country in college, and I was I was always determined that I was never going to be injured, and I never was. And I really do think that's a mindset. So fast forward, had five kids, did childcare, didn't work, did childcare at home. And then I'm a personal trainer in the last probably eight years. Well, there's a ton of personal trainers, right? And I wanted to help people more than just exercise, you know, just like strength training. So I started with RPR, reflexive performance right. research. And I wanted to get injuries out of people. Well, that didn't do at all. So then I took a class on neurology through Z Health. Then I took a lymphatics course. I took an eight hour course on the tongue. Like there's a lot with having the tongue on the roof of your mouth that helps your body, but just all these little things. And then if I couldn't figure out something like all my muscle testing, I kind of just created a shortcut. And then every time I would do things, I learn on how can I help people more? And then I read this and that. And so just in my drive, my drive and my passion to just help more people. So yeah. that came from. That's that's really cool. And by the way, uh, as soon as you said that about roof uh, tongue in the roof of your mouth, Brandon wrote that down because he will be trying that actually all day tomorrow. Um, yes. Yeah. I hope nobody. <laughs> I hope nobody tries to call me. I'll, I'll answer it like that. Yeah, everything. <laughs> like, hey, how you doing? Yeah. <laughs> so, no, I'm glad you brought up RPR because uh, on your website you're quoted as saying, "Insanity is treating injuries with the same treatment, and it keeps coming back." My methods are different and they work. The brain is where the injury starts. Uh, so we need to address the brain in the process. What do you mean by the brain is where the injury starts? That, that was fascinating to mm -hmm. me to hear that. So you get hit in the elbow. Does the pain start there? No, the elbow sends messages to the brain. Is this, is this threatening or not? Then okay. you're, oh, okay. It's not, you know, you can make it, you can go on or, oh, shoot, man, we're shutting you down. So your brain basically shuts down that elbow and you're not going to move it because it's, it's threatening to the body. So why don't we go to the brain and that's where the muscle testing comes in, where we go in and we'll, I, we can pull out by, by muscle testing what's causing it and, and fix it there. Cause I'll get kids to come to me and go, Michelle, will you wrap my elbow and kind of, you know, break up the fascia? I go, Yes and no. I'll do that, but we're going to do neuro because otherwise I'll see you tomorrow because we're mm -hmm. not feeding what's causing it. Yeah, that's really fascinating because as I was researching for this uh, show tonight, I was it, it seemed like a lot of what we're talking about is distracting the brain, right? It's almost like a look over there kind of a – is that accurate to say? Is it is it a, a – is it as simple as distracting the brain? I know through a lot of different techniques and strategies, but is that kind of what your goal is uh, as it relates to that? No, I wouldn't say distracting. I would say when we muscle test someone. So if I ask someone, um, say, I am Michelle Lee and we test me and my arm is solid, then they say, um, my name is John. And boom, my brain knows that. So we're going, actually, we're going to the subconscious. The brain knows that that's not who I am. And I could try to hold my arm up as hard as I could, but because I'll do this with college kids and go, you're not strong enough to push my arm down. How can you do that? I go, you guys, it's your brain. It knows right from wrong. And so that's what we're going to. And when we can figure out what's causing it, then it goes, oh, 
and it locks it in and boom, it's gone. Yeah, this is really cool. It's a um, so so just to kind of stay on this point for a minute and for the listeners, what she's doing there is an exercise where she's holding her arm up. And if I understood you correctly, if you're holding your arm straight away from your body and you are um, affirming thoughts like, you know, that my name's Michelle and those are accurate, then that you maintain that control. But as soon as you start thinking about things that are not accurate or not truths, um, then that is when you would kind of drop that. Is that accurate? Yeah. When, when you re muscle test and boom, yeah, there's a one where you can, okay, get a baseline. Someone stands behind you, pushes on your arms. Then I just did a video on this today. I didn't post it yet though. And you ask someone, okay, think of someone that is threatening in your life. Just it kind of, they kind of scare you. Your arms go down. And then you think of someone that really, really makes you happy and and it helps you in your life. You could probably do chin-ups on their arms because their arms are so solid. So what, where do we want to be? Do we want to be in a collapsed state, afraid of living of, with people that um, are negative in our life? Or do we want to be around positivity and people that bring us up? Are we in a collapsed state? Or are we in an expanded state, right? So Michelle, I, I saw one of your videos where you did that with uh, one of the, the, uh, I think one of the female teams that you work with or whatever, they seem to be, they seem to be amazed by it, quite frankly. So what is the reaction that you, cause this, this is not to your point and, and you've, you've discussed this and you, you talk about, this is not your typical way to train or treat injuries and things like that. Do, are most of the folks that you start with, are they skeptical? Is this one of those things where they're like, Oh, come on, Michelle, no way. And then they start seeing the results. Yeah. And you know what? Many people are skeptical and many people just don't believe. Mm-hmm. So I would show that to show them. But I I do virtual training and I, I had great results from one kid today. I'll tell you about it later. And then I had another kid who it still didn't work. Mm-hmm. But he and I've had about four people out of 400 that it has not worked, but they just, eh, that's dumb. That doesn't work. And that's okay. Because what you said yesterday, if we believe something's true or we believe it is not true, we are correct. That's right. 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 Yeah. Right. No, it's, it's, it's so true. And I, and you made me think when you were talking about that collapse state versus expanded state in that fear, um, That's probably one of those things, you know, we talk all the time about this idea in sports psychology of, you know, it's impossible to to concentrate on the reverse of an idea and expect positive results. Like you can't say as a pitcher, don't throw the ball high, don't throw the ball high, because what's the thing you're focused on is throwing the ball high. Ultimately, you're going to, you know, throw the ball high. So I almost think of you cracking this code before your, you know, your athletic time uh, in college of, Hey, I'm I'm not going to be, I'm not going to get an injury. Right. I mean, you almost were reinforcing that with those affirming thoughts and therefore you're in an expanded state and that's what helped you do it. Right. Right. We had a kid that um, he told his mom, he goes, mom, I'm afraid for this football game. I'm really nervous. I'm going to get hurt came off with a severe concussion and a shoulder uh, stinger. And I, mom told me that. And I said to my, I said, well, of course he got hurt because he thought it and he expected it. And your thoughts and your words are energy and they go to your conscious, tells your subconscious and it brings it forth. Yeah. And, and I, I would point out to, at this point to the listeners too, that if you think about, um, just the confirmation biases that we go through on a daily basis. You know, I mean, uh, you look at social media platforms, they live off of it, right? That, that, that one little thing that you kind of think, uh, oh, yeah. they then create an echo chamber around you that just it, the whole manifestation and, and manifesting idea and thought is, is out there and it's true. And, and so I I would just tell the listeners at this point, like, Think of times in in your life and 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 again on a daily basis where you have all these confirmation biases. It's, to your point, Michelle, you go into a game thinking you're going to get hurt, 
And I would almost be willing to bet that his injury probably wasn't even as bad physically as it was, but he thought going into it that he was going to get hurt. And now that confirmation bias becomes almost a multiplier of that pain and discomfort. Yeah. A hundred percent. It's, it's insane. Our, our, it, it, our thoughts and our words create our work, you know, create our it, world. It's so true, Brandon. I was thinking about, um, you know, early on in one of our shows, we were talking about the power of thought and there's a lot of research around, you know, negative thoughts being four times more powerful than positive, you know, positive thoughts from a, uh, what it can do. And that when you speak those negative thoughts, it's actually like a 10 times multiplier for that versus just thinking the thought itself. So you, this is a nice, I think, segue to something. So in addition, um, into that research for the show, I was doing some RPR research and I don't know what website I was on, but it was talking about, um, how stress pushes the body into a survival state. And as a result, our bodies utilize compensation patterns that limit performance and can lead to injury. And I was thinking about the Super Bowl because it was like, you know, it made a lot of sense to me because a lot of injuries happen when we are in these heightened uh, states of stress. You know, whether that is, I mean, you think about every year in an NCAA uh, tournament, there's a lot of players that will get injured, some really crazy injuries too. Um, but the everybody can probably remember back to the Super Bowl here recently with uh, Dre uh, Greenlaw for the 49ers, the linebacker who a non-contact injury, just standing on the sidelines, running onto the field and he gets hurt. And it's like, you know, I mean, that was like for me, something that I could right away go to when I was doing the research for this uh, show was just the idea that he's in a stressed state and therefore the body is already in that like, uh, you know, in, in your words earlier, collapsed state. And now all of a sudden things happen. Yeah. Yep. And I thought that too, because we're, we're in fight or flight. We're not going to, we're, we're more likely to get injured. And then when you're in the rest and digest, and when I fix people, I have them hum because humming puts you in that rest and digest. So if we can think of being in more of that, not you want to in a certain state have a mix when you're in a sport, but being, he was an extreme. My gosh. Right. Yeah. What did two steps and he, yeah, pull that muscle. Yeah. Yeah, it's so crazy. This is so fascinating to me. So talk to me a little bit, if you would, about RPR. You know, we've mentioned this a couple of times, this reflexive performance reset. What is it and can anyone do it to themselves or do you need someone else to guide you through that? So anyone can do it. And I'm just going to say that it's Cal Dietz and Chris Corfett. And you can find all the videos on there. So I'm not giving anything away. So it's, it's really great. and. So what I do, an example, Let, let's do it right now, guys. So you're okay. going to take one arm. If you just want to do one, check your range of motion. You can, so we'll just work on one. So what you do, it started with Douglas Hill, this guy from, gosh, Africa. So you go right in your armpit area. He called it the tank top area. And you go up to your collarbone. So we go in there because when I do this with teams or people, I like to give them evidence. So they can go. And if they didn't do it right, I go, you got to dig in harder mm-hmm. or you the right spot. Because I had a football player halfway through the season in college. He goes, Michelle, it doesn't work. I'm like, come over here. And all the guys were watching. <laughs> and he's like, whoa, you were, you know, you were hitting it. And, that, and then you recheck. And mm-hmm. did it make sense? Yeah. Yep. Wow. And no. you just, but what I do is my quarterback, I always dig in there because he's not going to dig hard enough. And obviously that's a very important player. So the rest of them, they, you know, they get in there. So there's just so many spots. So you can go under your collarbones and that activates your neck muscles. Now you can test things too. Like if we have kids, you can push on their head and they can check. They were pushing too hard and like cranking on their necks, but we can test all of these. So you assess and reassess and you, that's where you get by in and you see it really does work. But I'm going to tell you a secret about RPR. If you want to lock it in so it lasts longer, hum. Why? Because like I said, it puts you in that rest and digest. And it puts you in that relaxation and it locks it in. Because if you're stressed and you're doing it, it's not going to last that long. 
It's it's really interesting because so the physical therapist I go to for my shoulder, um, it's a physiotherapy uh, place, and they talked about like using a massage gun to get in there to that point that you were just doing. And so I will do that to really loosen up my shoulder. But what I'm going to start doing is the humming piece, because my next question for you was going to be, how do we get that to be more sustainable to where that that's something that lasts? And it's so like, guys, I mean, I'm going to give you the website again. I know we talked about this in the intro, but it's neurobasetraining.org. Um, follow Michelle on TikTok, follow her on Instagram, because these, this is a whole new world. I think that we're opening up. I mean, I know that it's been around for a little while now, but I think people, if they could get themselves ex- more exposure to, uh, some of these tricks, because everything, as you've mentioned, is so connected. Like one of the things when I was researching, I saw where they're using like a massage gun on the back of a head, like on, on the side, like, you know, like watch the videos, uh, you can find them online or whatever. Um, and I don't want people just to go start drilling in their head with a massage. Yeah, hey, just, yeah, let's yeah, make disclaimer. sure that the listeners know <laughs> yeah, that's right. it's John Cullen with two L's, <laughs> not Brandon <laughs> Allen with two L's. Was it, was it Pony Ridge? Yeah, it, it was kind of like right in the back of the neck, but it was to loosen up the hip, uh, flexors. Like it was like this, like really, a uh, cool connection of, but you do it on the side with the side, like the side of the massage gun, not directly uh, at it, but it just kind of just gently, and you do it on the lowest setting. Again, this was off of the video, so don't nobody come at me on, uh, you know, social media or anything. But th- the point I'm making is that's what's so fascinating is how there's a connection from all of these uh, muscles, and sure enough, when you do that. These are some of the things that that happen is like you start to loosen up other muscles. You're like, how in the world is that even connected? But it's amazing. Yeah. Well, you know what? Right behind your ears, that's where you activate the glutes. Wow. Is that right? For RPR? Yeah. Yeah. So. See, that's incredible. It, it is nuts. And and it, I mean, it, I hear this and, and, you know, we talked a little bit before we got on, on the show, but you know, acupuncture has a very similar effect of, you know, certain points of pressure and, and what it can relieve and help and the holistic approach there. So Michelle, do you remember like the first time or the, the, the first pressure point you did or something where you were just like, had this epiphany of, okay, I've really got to start introducing and providing this to, you know, my clients and and all that. Yeah, you know, and I took the RPR course and and we we tested. I was like, "Whoa, this is cool." And then just doing it with the kids, they couldn't but but when they I love it when we we do a hamstring one too, and I swear every time I get, "Oh, wow." Um yeah. that, but that's where I really like to show some assessments because then oh, well, they're doing it right, but then every time they they're always like, "Ah, you know, like that's right. so, and it is, but, but again, I even, I even messaged, uh, um, I think it was Cal. I'm like, have them hum or, or you can muscle test and lock it in because then your brain knows it'll last longer. Yeah. So. It's a, um, you know, it's, it's interesting. Brandon, you just made me think of a, uh, question I was going to ask tonight is, remembering that first wow case right it's that first hard to treat that you just absolutely were like hey we're gonna we're gonna try this out i feel like i have a solution for you and i i bet you that was really rewarding when all of a sudden it just clicks and all you know it opens up a whole new can of things yes yeah i the the greatest um response i get and i love is when i do muscle tests and get people out of pain that is like when people, I'll ask, I ask one kid, I go, how's your shoulder now? My favorite answer. Well, Michelle, I really don't feel any pain. I'm like, right. yes. <laughs> yeah. You no, know? it's really cool. It, and, and, and I'm, I'm, this is aimed at giving Brandon a cheat code to CrossFit, something he does on a <laughs> daily basis. But um, you just mentioned there about that point behind your ears. If you are in the middle of a workout, for example, and the glutes are starting to tighten up, is 
can you trigger that same thing there and relax that to where now you can actually do more? It activates it. Honestly, I have another video on loosening the glutes and that you just hit a spot. You'll, you'll feel it. Like I have you sit down and that's a big thing I do before football games. I'll put a heel in people's glutes and it, it loosens up their full body. Yeah. Wow. That's in, it's incredible. I, I tell you what, I mean, it's, you know, I'll tell you a video that really resonated with me from your TikTok was, um, and you know, uh, I feel like I'm just, I'm 52 and I feel like I'm 82 all the time. Anyhow, I don't know. If uh, you, you all- can't be cause you're on TikTok. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, <that's> true. Yeah. <laughs> that keeps me young. It's a fountain of youth. But you had an aging better with essential movements video. And there was a quote you said in this that I really loved. You said, as we age and our bodies don't move as much, our brain sees this as a threat. Talk a little bit about that, because I think we have a lot of listeners that are probably comparable age to me uh, that are probably getting a little bit more. Because, I, Michelle, I feel like I'm literally like every joint in my body. There's times where like I'll stand up and it's just like the Tin Man from like the Wizard of Oz. Hey, old Man River. <laughs> stop yelling right? at the kid. Stop yelling at the kids <laughs> on your yard and maybe you won't be so sore every morning. <laughs> I love it. And, you know, I wonder what happens first. So if we. All of a sudden we, we get tired. We've worked a good life and, and people sit too much. They sit too much. And then does the brain, the brain goes, well, if you're not going to move and, and you're getting weak, I'm going to keep, I don't know what comes first. Um, then your brain goes, okay, then I'm going to limit you because you're not moving. Ah. So then and you can't move as fast or you mm. can't go upstairs. So your brain knows your brain's number one priority is survival. And if you're not moving, it's going to go on, going to kind of limit you because you move more, you haven't in, right. in that. So, and then you heard in my other term, motion is lotion, you know, keep moving because we will kind of lose that mm. because brain is, is making you survive. And so, and then we get these people that start looking down because mm-hmm. they don't move much. And there's the tongue on the roof of your mouth because it helps your head stay upright too better. You know, I, d- I always tell people, just try to keep moving. Keep yeah. moving. Your brain's going to shut you down because it's going to think it's a threat and it's going to try to make you survive. So, yeah. That makes a lot of sense That's because it, it's like it's preventing you from injury, right? It's trying to prevent you from injury because it thinks like, well, geez, you're, you know, evidently not going to move very much. So we're going to. You know, whenever the time comes where you do move a little. Well, it's interesting, too, because that all and and I bet if we went back and looked at the the research on this, but that's what happens with like your metabolic basal rate, right? Is that you get to this point of homeostasis and you will your body will go, hey, if you're not going to use the twenty eight hundred calories and I'll just I mean, I can get by. And that's why like starving yourself and all that right. doesn't work. It's not effective yet. <laughs> because your body's just going to go, well, I, okay, then I'll just, we'll eat anything, which is usually lean muscle. If you're not, you know, if you're not feeding it and it's going, I'll, I'll eat that up. I can survive on 1200 calories or whatever, <clears throat> but I will say this before we go to the next question. I remember um, when I was probably seven, eight years old. My great grandfather, um, <laughs> I mean, we would be in the dead of summer in Mobile, Alabama, and he's wearing long johns, uh, overalls, and we're picking onions and potatoes. And he would, he, he was at that time 95 years old. Wow. Yeah. And still going at it. And huh. I remember being worn out at the end of it. And he looked like he hadn't even done anything. And I I remember him telling me, he was like, Brandon, um, you, you just keep basically keep using it. Like you use it or lose it. So just, you know, have a reason to get up in the morning, have, you know, have, have a purpose and go about your day as, as best you can. It was, it was impactful back then. That's wow. And that's a blue zone. You know, those, those people live because 
they they keep moving. They have a purpose, but relationships too. Mm-hmm. We had the relationship with you guys, but he kept moving, and mm-hmm. that's and um, sweet potatoes. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. It right? makes sense. You can't get wrong with sweet potatoes. I, <laughs> I, I, you touched on something there that I that I thought is really cool about. And it, I think we're almost starting to get into some of that bioenergy healing because that's the mind, the spirit, all the connectivity of all of that, right? The body. Um, talk to us a little bit about that bioenergy healing and just how that kind of plays into all of the other cool stuff that you're doing. Well, ah, that was interesting. So this was a class I took. Um, um, this that was another one, but uh, the Demanche method of energy healing. It was people from Slovenia. So, so neat. Um, and you can basically, I can, I could open your aura and I could push you over. I mean, I had a woman that I was working on from the Netherlands. We turned the camera so she couldn't see me, but you can, you can push them over. Um, I, I have a few videos on that too. It's, and it's not anything spiritual. It's, we all have energy, right? Yeah. In positive or negative, And you can literally, you can push people over, but you can heal them too. I send energy healing to my dogs every day. And I have a video actually on my, on my neural based training of before and after of when I worked on my dog. Wow. Um, yeah. But any human can do it. But in, and, and I'll, I've always talked about this in a lot of my videos. What's our intention in life? And we, what is our intention to make money or is it to help people? And that's great if it's to make money, but if we have the right reason we're helping people, we can have it all. But I believe my intention is how many people can I help? But I love people and that's what I want to do. Right. But if you have that right intention and you're doing energy healing, you can send. But or it's also another thing with that is why is it that all of a sudden someone calls you and you go, I was just thinking about you because we send that energy and that's why that happens. Oh, that's interesting. Yeah. No, that that's true. I tell you, I mean, the mind is a, uh, it's amazing. We talk about it all the time on this show. Um, but you know, it, it's, it's one of those things that you, uh, I think it was on one of the videos I saw on TikTok where you're working on a high school athlete and you talked about that neuro reset with dots as a trigger. Um, and, and the pain was gone and, and you, and then there's another video. And I think this is kind of where I was going with the mind is powerful thing is that you, you have zero pain equals hundred percent focus of the brain on being a better athlete, not getting rid of the pain because now all of a sudden you're not focused on, well, I mean, there's a lot of different ways. I, I think we could talk about that from a mental performance standpoint, but in the, in, as it relates to what you're doing, uh, from a physical therapy standpoint, uh, and, you know, working with their training standpoint, working with these athletes is you're getting that mind, uh, focused on the right kind of in, out the right result, the right outcome that you're looking for. Correct. Right. Right. And, and what I meant in that. So if I've got a kid that had in even a shoulder surgery, so if I, and I clear, we clear the memories, clear the memory of the injury, you clear the memory of um the surgery that's vital why because your brain will never give you a hundred percent so i did this with a acl guy uh, uh, a football player he had i go so we're gonna clear this he be- he knew he believed in all that so i said think about how you heard it we tested him boom cleared it i said think about um your surgery boom cleared it i go walk around he's like oh that's weird he goes he could just all of a sudden, he didn't have the, that little bit of extra stiffness. He's like, but that brain is always going to remember that. So it's going to limit you maybe just a little bit. But it's always going to have that that threat. If we can clear that, boom. And I had a hip guy, too, from uh, the football uh, college, too. He's like, whoa, you know. But you, yeah. you, it's amazing. And it's not that hard. Think of all the people we could help. If we could teach everyone, clear that, even so, you. Yeah. So for the listeners, she's has her arm up. And so or, am I right to assume you're doing something? Because we talk about this all the time from a mental, mental performance standpoint is, you know, um, recognizing that you're 
thoughts are out of control, that you're in a, what we call red light situations, but finding something that is going to refocus you or release it first before you refocus. But it's it, so that clearing thought is what we talk about as flushing the thoughts, like the negative, you know, things that are coming in. So are you doing something physical just to kind of release that? Is that what the arm up is doing? And I'm not so much flushing the thought. I'm taking away the threat. Okay. Um, but, but no, I just muscle test them. So then I muscle test them as their arm goes down. And I had this one kid, I go, think about how you sprained your ankle. Well, my gosh, every time I go, my arm goes down. Think about, because if you muscle test it, your brain goes, it's clear. But if it goes down, it, it's not cleared because it's threatened. The brain mm-hmm. still threatened. So it collapses, right? Yeah. They have to think about it and focus on it. And finally I've met and boom, solid. But then that, like I said, that threat is gone. So your brain goes, if I don't remember anything, you won't, I'm not going to limit you. Right. Mm. And boy, if we can fix every, a sprained ankle, you know, and I'll ask, have you been in a car accident? Did you fall down the stairs when you were little? Let's clear all those. And then that's when their body can be a hundred percent because their brain's not constantly worried about that risk. That can set it. Yeah. Hey, this is, this is like being like having the cheat code to clear the check mm-hmm. engine light on your car. Right. Mm-hmm. I mean, that's, that's what we're talking about here. This is, um, I, I, <laughs> John mentioned it earlier. I will be doing all of it. <laughs> yeah. with, Brandon's with, going to walk around all day with his arm. He'll day, look like a all, scarecrow. I'm just telling you. So, <laughs> so He'll be like, push my arm, push my uh, arm. No, seriously. <laughs> ask me my name and then I will be able to keep you from pushing it. Um, so how how often, I mean, is this a daily practice and how um a listener that starts to incorporate this in their daily activities, do they see a difference in immediately? Do they see, you know, like, is, is there a, like any other kind of workout, is there a point in time where you just sit back and you can, like, it almost stays with you and you're like, wow, I am really um, in a better spot. It it stays with you because if the brain knows, people that get results right now, I had a trainer and I go, I fix someone with a wrist. He goes, I got a wrist thing. So I did one trigger and he goes, no way. And I still talk to him five months later. He goes, yep, it was gone. He did push-ups. He goes, I had that pain for nine months. So yeah. when the brain knows, but then I had a guy that got a helmet to the sternum. He goes, Michelle, and we did this stuff. He goes, I couldn't tell a big difference that day, but he said it was 80% better the next day. Yeah. And these, these kids aren't going to lie to me. They're college right. kids. They're very much still, they oh, won't yeah. come onto and that's fine. But boy, they, that's what I love. And if it didn't work, tell me because I'm going to figure it out. Sure. Well, it's also, I think that pain, it's funny how this is all connecting the dots for me now, because the pain X is that reminder of the injury, right? And so therefore, if once you've done the clearing part and you have muscle tested it and you no longer have the pain, then your body's probably going to be less likely to get in that collapsed state again because the, the, it doesn't have the reminder of anything that's there. So that's, that's the sustainability piece, I think. But what if you're in a bad mood or someone made your, you know, your boyfriend broke up with you and you're going to compete that day in a collapsed state. Like right. anything that cause that, you know? Yeah. So that's where I tell kids, don't let things bother you. Just focus on having a good game, meet, whatever, Right. you know? So just have a good mindset. And then if you need to later, let her go, you know? Yeah. No, I think it's good. It's, um, it's, it's really fascinating how it kind of comes back around to some of the things that we talk about on the show a lot, which is, um, you know, just kind of getting back into that present moment focus instead of thinking of all of the what if scenarios, all of the things that could be happening, um, and, and how these kind of play into it. And so I'm thinking about this, Michelle, and I'm like, 
this all makes so much sense. Like, why are we, what do you think is holding people back from more colleges, more pro teams, more people? Is it just exposure to it? Or is it, there's still like a little bit of a, well, that's good. You know, I mean, wh- why is it, why aren't we seeing more of this? Or maybe there is, I, maybe I'm just not tuned into that. There are some, um, I'm a personal trainer. So people, man, that I had, a. People don't love what I do because in I'm I'm very clear. They get assessed by the trainer. I never see anyone before right. there's but what I do can't hurt them anyways. But right. I would never see them before yeah. a, tra- a doctor. So I'm very clear about that. Because you know, people just don't believe that. They go, that can't be. You know, there's what I found is there's a lot of negative people in this world. They're just that doesn't work. And I'm like, then let me, I, I wish if I were present in front of all these people, I could, I could show everyone it does work. But when I show up in front of a team, my college teams, my high school teams, I go, okay, I'm going to tell you what I do. It's different. But if, and I point to someone, but if you think it's kind of dumb and it doesn't work, you are right. You right. decide to work, but then why is it working for everyone else? Yeah. And that they don't, you have a brain, but I don't. <laughs> but, but it's true. Because these people just think, well, I had a kid that had a hamstring, right? And I go, why do you keep coming back to me? And he goes, well, Michelle, doesn't it take six weeks to fix a hamstring? I go, yes, the old way. But when we go through the brain and when your arm goes down and we cleared something, it's cleared. And I said, let me ask you, when you leave here, do you dwell in it and worry it's not getting better? And he looks at me and goes, yeah. I go, That doesn't help. Your intention is, you know, it's healing and it's continually healing. And sure enough, the next week he came back and he's like, it's, it's almost gone. Yeah. You know, um, I'm thinking about our very first guest we ever had on this show, Dave, uh, Meyer, um, who's a physical therapist from, well, he, at the time he was, you know, he'd been with St. Louis Cardinals and he's written a book, um, you know, and, and a lot of really good stuff that Dave is, friend of the show he's he was on our 100th episode as well but he talks about these automatic negative thoughts this ants uh and how to kind of squash some of them and how important that is into because he's he's really good about the mental side of it um as well as the physical side but i really wanted to zero in on something you said there is she's said you know hey anything she's doing in this realm is always after they've been cleared um, after they're, you know, given the clear to go back to the playing field and there's still something that's limiting them from a, you know, whether it's pain, whatever the case may be. And I will say this as an athlete who's had, um, uh, multiple shoulder problem, not sh- multiple shoulder problems, but definitely multiple arm problems being a baseball player. I can remember having after my own nerve surgery, um, the doctor, giving me the clear to go ahead and get back to practice. And I had Brandon Biff, uh, Brian Johnson, who played uh, uh, baseball with this at the college of Charleston. He was cleared. We both had basically went through rehab at the same time for uh, elbow surgery. And Biff will be the first one to tell you. So I'm not speaking out of school about this, but you know, here's a guy that threw 90 some miles an hour before Mm -hmm. his surgery and when he came back from that, it was like probably mid seventies, something like that. And a lot of it was just because he was never allowed himself to just completely let go, like to, to completely yeah. just yeah. commit to, okay, I'm cleared. I should be able to go and throw again. But there is something so powerful about that mind that is in that fight or flight mode, like you're saying, and just would not allow him. Whereas I basically was like, all right, send it, you know, and, and went for it. Uh, and could throw again. And then of course, later on, John, John you know, was the, uh, yeah, Joe dirt to his arm. <laughs> yeah. Come on. I got a hemi. And yeah, he was, <laughs> he was going to see what he could do. I was going to see what sure. the, let, let the dogs out. That's yeah, it. Let, let's see. <laughs> let's, let's see, see how good do. that doctor was. <laughs> yeah. Even a hole. Funny. Yeah. But it, but it is true, but it's, it's, I mean, so, I, I bring that up because I want the listeners to understand when they're hearing this is like, you know, this is not like when you're saying, 
oh, well, somebody pulled a hamstring and I'm like, oh, just go ahead and clear it and it'll be fine. It's no, you know, they've been gone through the physical therapy and all yeah. that. Uh, but yet there's still something that's limiting them. And guys, we talk about this all the time on this show is like these, how we are constantly our own worst enemy when it comes to, to progress is like, whether that's coming back from an injury, whether that is, uh, you know, coming, being able to, to perform at your best when it counts the most in, in pressure situations, whatever the case would be, it's just literally finding different ways to uh, overcome some of these mental barriers. Now, one of the things, Michelle, I noticed about, um, and I think this was in the zero pain um, video that you had on, I was talking about earlier about uh, when you focus on being a better athlete, and not getting rid of the pain. I noticed you touching the, the like ankle touching different parts of the body. What's all, that all about? Is that the RPR or what is that, that you're doing? No, it's my muscle testing, how I find what's caught, what's triggering. Okay. The- the the injury and then you flare it you do it so i it's just kind of how i and that's a whole another ball episode of, <laughs> it's so well, hey, we'll bring you back <laughs> yeah, that's yeah, right. Right. Yeah. but that's how i well and you know um so we the third year we went to state you know i've been working with them there's a lot of different things to go into state but i worked with her injuries and in, we had a trainer that was amazing, Eddie Hodges, who he did stuff, but just what I did alone, it, I was able to, we we're able to just have one, basically one person be injured every year. So we've won state three years in a row, which is not common. Right. Um, but the last, we just went and I was kind of meditating. I was biking and going, God, what can I do to get, keep these kids on the field? Well, he goes, well, muscle test them. So the kid comes off the field had a helmet and she cleared him helmet to the shin and he had bruised and he couldn't really walk. So I'm like, okay. So that's what the last video is. And so I muscle test him, got him. She cleared him, got him back on. And he goes, at first he goes, Michelle, I couldn't, nah. He goes, it helped. Yeah. And so I helped him. And then I had another kid with a toe issue, cleared him and did some stuff, cleared him, got them both back on the field. That's what everyone should be doing. Why yeah. can't you figure out how to do that? We get injured athletes. Let's get them after they're cleared. Can we clear that threat in that brain and get it? Yes, we can. I, you know, you make me think about, um, Brandon, how many times when you would do something in a game or something, you would go to the trainer or you'd go to the team doctor and they would say, you're fine. It's sore, um, but you're not injuring yourself or anything like it, that. Yeah, it was like, and then they would always isolated. add whatever you're, yeah, whatever you're willing to tolerate or whatever yes. your, your, your pain you can tolerance. tolerate. That's yeah. right. Well, depend you be in. That's exactly what Michelle's talking about. There Absolutely. is like, if if you can tolerate it, and and she's talk about cheat code. She's just saying, not only can will I be able to get you to tolerate, I'm going to get you to forget about it. And right. then we can kind of move forward with this thing. So yeah. not even forget about it. The brain knows when I cleared it, yeah. the brain is like, okay, you cleared it. The threat's gone. The pain's yeah. gone, man. When you do this, your brain is smart and it knows that's why it goes down when we clear that. And I don't know why some people don't feel it right away. Some people, it's the next day. But is it the way our body and the energy in it kind of makes it, opens it up and moves it to, so there's no pain yeah. right, you know, later? But yeah, it takes away that threat. It's not just thinking about it. That's it works. Well, you yeah. know, you talk about these um, connections between all of the muscles. And that was something that coming back from a shoulder uh, problem one of the things that has been amazing to me and it really resonated with the video that you had was you were talking about doing the the importance of doing exercises on both arms because everything crosses over from the good mm-hmm. arm to the bad arm. Honestly, that hit me like a ton of bricks because my right shoulder is what I had my surgery on. My left shoulder was the good one. And as I was going through physical therapy, about halfway through physical therapy, I realized my left shoulder was starting to hurt, um, you know, and like was doing because I wasn't doing almost exercise, like sympathy you know, pain. Like, yeah, it was, it was almost like, a, well, no, I think it was almost like a, it was the same type of impingement I was having on my right shoulder. Oh. Um, but 
I, as I was doing, started doing exercises with both shoulders and started doing all that same stuff, it went away. And so now it's, it's fine. I mean, it's still sore at, at different times, but it's just that connection there made me think like, well, maybe there is some of that passing through to the other arm. Did your physical therapist, when you were rehabbing, did he have you, he didn't have you do both arms? No, I was just doing the one arm. Wow. That was, that was probably going to be, you yeah, know, go ahead. no, I was just going to say that was, uh, I don't know if that was just a timing thing or what, but yeah, I just ended up doing the one arm. So then now I just cheat and do both arms, even when they're not looking or whatever. But your brain is smart enough. Your brain's never going to make the uninjured arm so overwhelmingly stronger. And that, that strength crosses over. And yeah. so I had a kid that a young kid, third grade, she goes, oh, Michelle, Mrs. Lee, I can't move my arm very well. I go do 10 on your good arm. And then right. I go do one on your other arm. She goes, ah. yeah, I said, it crosses over. Yeah. Um, no, it's, it's, this is really, uh, it, it's really, so where do you see the evolution, Michelle, as you've kind of studied this and you're starting to dig into this deeper and deeper, um, where do you see the next phase of what we're talking about? Where, where's that going? Where are we, where do we need to tap into, uh, beyond what we're currently doing? Neuro, neuro based training. We need people to realize that the brain runs your body and why don't we go to the source of everything? We just need to have people believe that it works. You know, so many people are so skeptical and it's it's not that hard of a concept to understand. And it's yeah. not even that hard to teach. Um, I just think people are so, and, and I love physical therapy it, 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 when, but there's a time and a place for everything. And I think people just need to be more open and not threatened by it. Right. You know, it's a big world and I'm not out to say I know everything, nor do I want all this credit for anything. God just kind of brings it to me and I do it. You know what I mean? I'm not yeah. full of my, I just think, please let's help everyone. Right. Right. But, but people have to believe in it. And I think so many people are just skeptical and I'm, it's not a scam. Yeah. <laughs> it, it's well, definitely not a scam. I think it's yeah. interesting though, John, to, to hear Michelle talk about it because the way that she just did, because you think of the genesis of what we talk about a lot with the mental performance and all that, it, we would not have been able to ever think about adopting this. I mean, it's true. it just, th there would have been a stigma behind it. And I, I just see a lot of momentum with, with anything that is neurologically based I see a lot of momentum that way with overall health, how to tap into it, you know, all the stuff that um that Michelle's talking about. It's it's awesome. So I I hope that it gets adopted. I I would love to see you know right someone like Michelle on Knox's sideline yeah. on on a Friday night for sure. Well, I mean, but, one thing we know is that uh when it comes to coaches is anything that um, gives them a, uh, an edge, right. From a winning yeah. standpoint, that's how you get by in. And, and guys, look, I mean, you know, don't take our word for it. Don't take Michelle's word for it. Go on neurobased training.org, uh, org dot, dot, dot com, but neurobased training.org and read some of the testimonials from some of the coaches she's worked with, some of the athletes she's worked with. This is, it's it's what do you got to lose that's what i always say about things like yeah. as michelle said earlier it's not going to hurt you like let's say you try and do 30 of these different uh exercises or different things that she lays out for you or you work with her for a little while what do you have to lose it you know it's not like all of a sudden your arm won't bend a certain way because she was working on the mental side of of uh something so you know, you, know you, yeah. you you bring up something john you you talk about um, how, how do you adopt it, you know, on a, on a daily basis? It's, it's, you, I think Mark Glassini said it, you know, the stuff that we're talking about here, this, um, cutting edge yeah. stuff, when people adopt it, you, you may not notice it until you play against right. the people that have adopted it. Yeah. And I would say this would be the same thing. 
as a coach to know that if Michelle talks to them and clear and, and everybody's cleared that I continue to have a healthy team. Yeah. It is huge. I mean, huge. It, that is a monster step forward for the program. Yeah. So you get the players back sooner yeah. than they, they, they would, would have been otherwise. And I mean, it doesn't matter what the injury is. We, everybody has seen it happen, whether that's coming back from knee injuries, ankle injuries, shoulders, whatever. Yeah. The the thing that limits most people, they could be back sooner. It's just they can't get over this collapsed, uh, you know, state that they're in, basically. So, well, and you know what? People are finding me. I just started. This is really cool. Um, I got a pro baseball player, and nice. he. I go, how is it going? And I I keep in contact. I kind of keep giving him little things to do. He's like Michelle. I threw, and he's he said his best was ninety two to ninety seven miles. Or, was Michelle in practice five miles an hour faster? Well, let me tell you something, Michelle. You will now hear from a lot of other MLB players because they, it, it, that, so, that so yeah, really one, one of two things is getting ready to happen, Michelle. A bunch of more MLB players, yeah, or parents of uh, 13 right. and 14. That's right. Yes. Either but, way, yeah. But you know what? And I know that I will be with a team just because. It works and it's, right. it's, it's not that hard. And yeah. it's just, it's so neat for us to win state three years in a row. Right. And the year, the guys were good, but we were like, yeah, wow. like, but I also have that positive energy when I meet with them and I believe in them. Um, and I just, how did, how did that happen, Michelle? Did you go to that coach or did he see your website and Didn't got in touch husband? with you? Um, yeah. Okay. Oh, okay. Yeah. We're, we're going through a divorce now. Oh, but, oh, sorry. But that's yeah. a good, that's a good, but that, that's the thing is that, but he had to have seen this work in person and is like, oh, you know, we need it. But everyone's looking for that winner's edge. Like that, that's the thing is everyone's looking to find that winning edge. Well, and you know what? If it didn't work, why would he keep me? Someone right. took a chance on me because someone said that. Wasn't that your husband? I said, yes. But yeah. everybody, Someone to take a chance. No question about it. it. Yep. And it evolved to now. Yeah. So and I'm grateful for that. Yeah. Well, and look, I mean, this is just one organization you're working with. You've got other things. So tell them in the last couple of minutes here, let, let's talk about that. So neurobasetraining.org. What can they expect um, from some of the sessions that you've got? I know a lot of different things that you're doing there. Um, you know, the nutrition, the, uh, training piece of it, but also some RPR stuff. Like talk a little bit about what people can expect if they go to your website. So if, so they'll go to my website and see everything I do. I do consulting with people. And what I do then is we, we just clear that injury, but I teach them how to do it on themselves. Yes. And we do different lymphatic sites. Everyone should know how to, and it's just, It literally takes you three minutes to hit all these sites. What does that do? That gets your body, it gets toxins and waste out of your tissue, but it brings oxygen and nutrition in, gets rid of inflammation, right? So that's something important that I do before um, practice with my football teams. And then we do RPR, but ideally they're coming with pain or they're coming with something that's not quite right. So that's where I can teach them how to muscle test themselves or I literally can muscle test them. And, and I just worked with a young guy today, uh, just before you guys, I got his pain in his wrist from a seven to maybe a one. Wow. Yeah. So that's what I do. Or they can hire me for clinics. And last summer I went to some different high schools and I worked with the coaches and the kids and kind of showed them all and, and, and got rid of injuries in some of them. So ideally they come to me with an issue and, and I can do a phone consult, but it's, it is very successful. Yeah. That's really good. I, um, is this, by the way, is this like the, um, Oh, uh, NKT is like RPR. Is that like that neurokinetic stuff? No, it's not, Uh, but I, I have a book on that too. No, it's, but, um, yeah, because I think that's, uh, like, an antagonist and you know one but no it's not okay 
It's yeah, probably- I was just curious about that because when I you, when you start to research some of this stuff, it it um, you definitely have a lot of different things pop up uh, on the screen. There's you know, overlap it's- too, right? Yeah, I mean, yeah. There's, yeah. yeah. Yeah, no, it, it's really, really interesting. And I think it's now the other thing I was going to ask you is um, the connection between certain muscles and other muscles. Is there a book that the listeners could go to? Is there any resource that they could see? Like if they wanted to find some of that mapping of a body on on like what is connected to this, like how do you even find these points behind your ears that are connected to your glutes and so now, on and so forth? Good question. That no book. Um, like I said, the RPR guys, Cal Dietz, he's got some really, really great videos that he'll explain it just in great detail. Okay. So just look up Reflexive Performance Reset and Cal Dietz. D-I-E-T. So, or put RPR in Cal Dietz. But he's got, um, oh, and I just watched it and I kept watching it because I did take the class, but then it reiterated and kind of taught me more but he boy he's got some real he shared a lot of great information to help a lot of people that's awesome but well, one man. book i i would recommend I and mean, it's probably backwards this is a life changer for anyone it's okay. called the power of your subconscious mind by joseph murphy power of your subconscious mind and you can find this on um youtube and you can listen to the whole book because i do that too but what it, why this book? Because it, it, it reiterates how powerful our brain is. And like you guys are always talking, like our thoughts create our world. And yeah, but it just says it so nicely. And it's a 30 year old book. That's it's awesome. I bought on Amazon, you guys. It truly be makes my next, uh, next book for sure. Well, we yeah. can't thank you enough. I mean, this has been fascinating. Absolutely. I feel like we just got started with the conversation, but. I, I mean, one thing that comes clear through your videos on TikTok and through just our six minute conversation is energy. I mean, you are an electric factory, like yeah. energy yes. to the like, you know, um, so, so I, I, I tell you what, I mean, just that positivity that you put out would be have a healing power in and of itself, I would imagine. So that's really cool. And, and continue to do the great work that you're doing with those kids, those athletes, because it's a, it's a lot of good stuff. And like I said, just a little bit ago, guys, um, if you're listening to this and you're like, oh, I don't know, try it. Like, what do you got yeah. to lose? Like, right. I mean, everyone's looking, you know, for that edge. If it, if you try it and it doesn't work, um, it's probably you. So get in touch with Michelle. <laughs> yeah. She can fix Don't it for it. you. That's right. Yeah. That's actually a really good book that I'm reading right now is Don't Believe Everything You Think. Um, it's a really good book. It's called, uh, yeah, Don't Believe Everything You Think, Why Your Thinking is the Beginning and End of Suffering. So guy, by a guy by the name of Joseph Wynn. But How do you spell it? Last? N-G-U-Y-E-N. And it's a really good book. Oh, I like that. Yeah. I'll check. I'll look that up. Thank you. Yeah. It, you, you'd love this because it the on the back cover, it says, although pain is inevitable, suffering is optional. Oh, wow. <laughs> That's awesome. There you go. So good tie in. All right. Well, listen, thank you so much. And uh, don't be surprised if we reach out to you again sometime in the future and try to get an update on how things are going. I would love it. Thank you guys for having me. Awesome. awesome. Thanks, Michelle. Have a great night. Thank you. Bye. Bye. Want to provide feedback or stay up to date with the show? Visit our Instagram page at Mental Advantage Podcast, or you can send us an email at podcast at mentaladvantage.net. To have John Cullen work with you or your team, please write to him at john.cullen at mentaladvantage.net. Thanks for listening to today's episode. 